So today this is kind of going to be a course on filters 101. Okay, we're going to tell you everything you thought you didn't know about filters, but really want to know, or what you didn't know, but might come back to haunt you later. We're going to we're going to try to square all this up so that you can compare the different type filters and what type of filter you might need in your application. So let's start from what is one of the oldest filters known to man, and that is a string filter. Okay? And very simply, they just take a core and they wrap string. And the tighter they wrap it, the smaller the micron rating. Okay? Filters typically come in 2.5 by 10 and 2.5 by 20 sizes on just about any filter that you can think of. And then with larger filters, you've got the 4.5 by 10 and the 4.5 by 20 sizes. And now there's a lot more sizes than that, but for residential applications, these are the most common sizes. 2.5 by 10, 4.5 by 10, 4.5 by 20, 2.5 by 10, 2.5 by 20. So it's pretty simple really. There's lots of different type filters though. A lot of people say, well, I like string filters because they last a long time. <laughs> yeah, they last a long time because they don't filter that well. We've done lots of tests where we run water with lots of solids through different filters and the string filters are probably the least, have the least ability to trap these dissolved solids. We can run a thousand or two thousand gallons through a string filter and maybe just have a few ounces of dissolved solids. Whereas if you're running it through a pleated filter, you may have a couple pounds of dissolved solids. So U.S. water really has pretty much phased out string filters. String filters are kind of like dinosaurs. They're used to filter out pterodactyls, brontosaurus, T-Rexes, things like that. I'm making that part up, but you know, it's old technology. We call it dinosaur technology. If you're using filters for a whole house, then you're probably going to want to look at a pleated filter. And again, a whole house, they come in 2.5 by 10, 2.5 by 20, 4.5 by 10, 4.5 by 20. But if you're talking a whole house, you should at least be looking at a, a 4.5 by 10, preferably a 4.5 by 20. This is a big housing, but you're filtering all the water in the home. And this filter has a lot of surface area. What this is, is is a media, a sheet of media that is pleated. This thing's about 26 feet long and we've got 26 feet of media in here to trap particles. We're not relying on depth of filtration like a string where the string can expand and allow the particle to come, th to come through. We're talking about a pleated area that is a definite barrier to solids that is going to trap that. And this holds a tremendous amount of dirt and sediment. I mean, do you want to buy a filter just so that it'll last a long time? Well, here's how to make it last a real long time. Take the filter out and don't use it. It'll really last that way. But if you want a filter that's going to really filter, that's going to really work, it's hard to beat a sediment filter for a whole house application. So that's why we don't use the, the string filters much anymore. Let's throw those away here. That's why we use the pleated filters because the pleated filters are made for the 21st century. They're made for higher flows. And you might think you don't need a filter this way, this big, but the thing is, if you use a filter this big, you're not gonna have to change it as much. You're gonna have to change it half as much as a filter that's, that's this size, okay? Now, before I go on, a couple of things I wanna talk about is micron ratings. A lot of people don't understand, well, what's the difference between a one micron, a five micron, a 10 micron? It's very simple. The larger the micron rating, the less it's going to take out. So a 50 micron is not going to take out very much. A 5 micron is going to take out a lot more. A 1 micron is going to be even more than that. And then you can get down to submicrons, which is like half micron or 0.35 or 0.2 microns. Those are going to take out an awful lot. Look, in my experience, most homes should use a 5 micron filter. Some people use a 50 so they don't have to change it very often. But again, why do you want a filter? Don't you want to trap particles? A 5 micron filter is the one that I would choose in my home. In fact, it's the one I have chosen in my home. 
A five micron filter is going to take out a majority of sediment, sand, silt, and particles, and I've got something floating here, um, in the water to give you good, clean water. Occasionally, we have to do what's called step down filtration. If people have a lot of sediment or sand or silt or cloudiness in the water, sometimes we have to use two or three of these. We may start with a 20 micron filter, then go with a five micron filter, and then go with a one micron filter. So there is no exact answer on this, but if you, if you can see particles in the water, sometimes you're going to have to use what we call step down filtration. So we've settled that. Pleated filters are by far and away the best. Don't use paper because bacteria in the water will degrade the paper and the paper tears rather easily. This is pleated polyester. It's not going to degrade. It's going to last a long time. Some people say, well, I wash mine out. Well, you can do that. <laughs> we don't encourage it on any filter. You, you can do that if you want. Some companies make a living saying, well, you can wash our filters off. The problem is, this is your water and bacteria grows on the surface of these filters. And when you take them out of the cartridge, your grubby little fingers get bacteria on the filters. You're just asking for issues. I mean, a filter like this is under $30. And it may last a year or longer in a lot of cases. So I wouldn't be stingy about uh, replacing the filters. It does protect your water supply. Okay. Now, another very popular filter that's used is, is called a spun polypropylene or a melt blown filter. And this is our version of it. And, and by the way, you can see this has our label on it, made in, made in America, U.S. water. We have a preference for USA made filters. In fact, a lot of our filters that we sell, in fact, the majority of the filters that we sell are made in the USA. We call this a spun poly gradient density filter, and it actually has four levels of density. The outside is about 30 microns, then it goes into about 10, five or one or whatever your micron rating, whatever the final rating of this filter is, it's a gradient density filter so that it traps these particles. Now, again, these come in two and a half by 10, two and a half by 20, four and a half by 10, four and a half by 20. These are often used in reverse osmosis or drinking water systems because they're a very good barrier. They're not particularly good for whole house applications but they are good for point of use applications because they provide a positive barrier, unlike a string filter, against these contaminants. And one thing that we do on our melt blown, spun polypropylene, gradient density filters is they're grooved. These little grooves in here give us about 40% more surface area so the filter lasts longer and does a better job. That's one thing that we think is very important to have extended life out of these filters and we give it to you with the Groot filters. So we've covered string filters, we've covered pleated filters, we've covered melt blown filters. I'm going to toss these to the side. And now we're going to talk about carbon filters. This is a, this is a filter pack, a reverse osmosis filter pack. And by the way, at US Water, we sell a whole filter pack for most RO systems most standard, industry standard RO systems. It has two carbon blocks, the sediment pre-filter, which is the grooved uh, melt blown filter, and then it has an inline uh, polishing filter, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Carbon block filters have pretty well supplanted granular activated carbon as the filter of choice. We still do sell some granular activated carbon filters, uh, you know, that have loose carbon inside. One of the drawbacks to that is you get a lot of carbon fines when you turn on the water. The water may run black for a while. Whereas these extruded carbon block filters are extremely effective at trapping just about any contaminant. And they are also, they also deliver a, a very small amount of fines when they're, when they're installed. Again, we sell these in two and a half by tens, two and a half by twenties, four and a half by tens and four and a half by twenties. Um, and this happens to be a four and a half by 20. This weighs about seven pounds. If you compare, and this is made in USA too, by the way, if you compare some of the Taiwanese or Chinese knockoffs, they may weigh three or four pounds. These cost, cost more, but they have a lot more carbon and they're a lot more effective at what they do and they'll last longer. So 
you kind of get what you pay for. Again, most five-stage RO systems use two of these carbon blocks. They have a sediment pre-filter, a melt-blown sediment. Ours happens to be grooved. It works on anybody's filter and then the inline filter. And by the way, we have a little sanitization pack and the instructions on how to change the filters in our, in our uh, instructions. Also, there are what we call media filters. And these are filters that are sonic welded with some type of media inside. For instance, um, this happens to be a deionization filter. It has DI resin in it that deionizes uh, water. It's going to take out virtually everything in water. We have these with calcite to add minerals back to the water. We have softening cartridges that soften the water for certain applications. We have polyphosphate cartridges and a number of cartridges, but these are called refillable or, or, or media cartridges. These aren't refilled. There are some cartridges that we offer that are refillable. In other words, you can unscrew this and you can pour media inside. The problem is it's easy, they're easily compromised under high flows and that media can end up in your house. It can break the filters. These are very solid filters that are sonic welded. The media is not going to get out. This cartridge has to be replaced. Uh, we use these in labs, uh, remineralization systems, all sorts of things. So that, uh, that gives you the idea of those types of filters. Remember, I also talked about the inline filters. And we have a couple of these inline filters that we offer. Um, you can make an inline filter any way that you want, but typically these are used for polishing RO water. When the water comes out of the tank on a reverse osmosis system up to the faucet, this is a granular activated carbon filter that removes any funny taste and odors and things. But we also offer this filter with select quantum disinfection inside so that it provides you bacterially pure water. And that's something that uh, very few people are offering. So you can not only have an RO system that is going to take out chemicals and pesticides and taste and odor, it's also going to kill bacteria. And that's very unique in the industry. And of course, we also have what's called a reverse osmosis membrane. Not really a filter because it utilizes reverse osmosis, which separates uh, water from the solids. But for our practical purposes, this reverse osmosis membrane is also made in USA. And it fits most common reverse osmosis systems that use industry standard housings. Um, you can look at the specs and see that we've got anywhere from 25, 35, 50, 75, 100, 150, 200 gallon a day residential reverse osmosis membranes. And I'd re be remiss if I didn't tell you about some of our new technology. This looks like a pleated filter, but it's much more than that. This uses electroabsorption. This is a, this is a media that effectively has a three or four micron rating, but the fibers have a zeta charge. So effectively it's submicron because particles as low as 0.1 microns are trapped with the zeta charge in this filter. Filters like this can take out chromium-6, lead, bacteria, yeast, virus, cyst, and things like that. One final thing, you'll notice this has this double O-ring on the top, and this one does it. Most filters in residential applications are what we call DOEs, double open-end filters, okay? DOE means double open-end. This kind of fits up in the housing and, and provides a pretty good seal, but it's not 100%. If you want 100% seal, then we have filters that require what's called a 222 seal, which is a double O-ring. This fits up in the filter, seals perfectly so that nothing can get by. Everything has to come in and come out the middle. So this is a, this is what's called our pulsar disruptor filter or pulsar interceptor filter. It looks very much the same. And it's available in a DOE for people that have that type of housing. But if you tr want true bacteria protection with this filter, then you have to use the 222 cartridge, the 222 style. And that, that only fits our US water housing. So these are very, very new technology that does some amazing things. And maybe you're a little bit confused. Maybe you don't know what type filter you need. Here's the thing. 
at U.S. Water, if you call us and explain what sizes you have, you can, exp you can measure the difference, the, the length from end to end. You can measure the diameter. We can recommend a filter for what you're going to need. And that filter is probably going to be made in USA of a much higher quality than you're going to get with the form made filters. It's going to work better and last longer. And know this, you can trust the experts at U.S. Water Systems to have a filter that's going to solve your application or your problem. Call us today if you have any questions.